You're using ChatGPT all wrong, but it's not your fault. Every time a new feature drops, your YouTube feeds are flooded with a sea of repetitive videos, all promising to unlock the full potential of these LLMs. But most of them haven't stood the test of time, meaning they have not been rigorously tested in real life scenarios. Today, we are breaking the cycle. In this video, I'll show you prompt engineering techniques that have been scientifically vetted and personally tested over months of daily use. Strategies that continuously produce high quality outputs with insight sites grounded in scientific papers. I'll show you how to master chat GPT the right way. Let's dive in. So the first trick is having clarity of thought. Let's imagine a spectrum, less clarity of thought and having maximum clarity of thought. You want to be on this side of the spectrum. Let me give you an example. Here I'm trying to ask chat GPT to give me party ideas for a 10 year old kid's party. But because on the phone you have dictation, meaning you can use your speech to type, sometimes you have a lot of filler words like ums and us, and that reduces the clarity of thought. And surprisingly, that affects the output of the model. So here, obviously it gives me the ideas of what party should be, such as art and crafts play, sports day party, or outdoor adventure party theme, but it is not as good as it can be. Now, this is the same prompt, but with a high clarity. So. Here I'm asking, please provide a list of birthday party ideas suitable for a 10 year old child. See, immediately getting to the point. And now I have a much more richer output. Not only I have themes and activities like previously, but I also have game suggestions. And this is a really simple and easy example, but this goes all the way. If you want to create a code and you have clarity of thought in your prompts, you will get better results. But now you ask how to have that clarity of thought into your prompts. Well, I have the solution. You just ask ChatGPT for it. For example, I use the same prompt from less clarity of thought. I paste it here and I said, can you improve the clarity of thought in the following text? And there you go. That way I have much more higher clarity of thought. The second trick is to automate your workflow. ChatGPT is really good at writing code, but most people don't use that feature. For example, I find myself using Google Docs a lot. So every month I have a meeting with my manager and in that meeting, I take notes on what to improve and what are the good things that I have done, plus the next action steps for the projects that are upcoming. In order to do that, I take generally notes. But here I have created a custom menu where I just click this button. There you go. My daily one on one with the date up top, my notes and my actionable points. All of those things are ready to go. And let's say after a week or after a month, I have another daily one on one with my manager. I come here, custom menu, click this button again. And there we go. I will have another page with an updated date here. You can create custom app scripts to improve your workflow, whether it is in Google Docs, Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint. That way you can use the compounding effect to save your time and multiply your productivity exponentially. In order to create this script, I went to chat GPT and I asked it to create a Google app script where it has experience of over a decade at IBM and Microsoft as a software engineer, and it has experience of creating Google app scripts. And there you go. It created a very detailed script and also gave me instructions on how I can run and save this. So I went to Google docs, click on extension, click on app scripts, and there you go. You paste this here and then you run it. Along with automation, you can use GPT-4's coding capability to create compelling data science and data analytics tools for yourself. On top of that, you can use your existing data that you have to plot it and figure out what trends are there. One of the most interesting use cases I've seen recently is that one of my friends actually plotted her internet use cases over six months, eight months, and then she was able to figure out that, oh, she's not actually using that much internet. So maybe she can drop down her internet usage and save some money. Things like that you can do. If you don't have the data science science expertise or data manipulation skills, you can do those things right now. The fourth trick is few short learning. The idea is that whenever you are giving an instruction or a prompt to GPT-4, instead of giving a generic suggestion, you give it exactly what you need. You give it an input and an example of the expected output. That is called few short or one short learning. Here I'm trying to figure out based on the subject of the email, what category the email should be considered. If this is the function that I'm trying to teach GPT-4, I'll give a couple of examples like that. And then I'll ask that, oh, if I receive an email from the bank, what category it should go to? And it will tell you personal finance. Another example is I was trying to figure out what sports event to watch in February of 2024. So I created this specific prompt that let me know the name of the event, the country, date and time, and likelihood of me liking the event 
based on my preference of watching sports, feel free to make up a percentage. And it created a list of events where sports events are highly likely that I will watch and I will like. So Winter Olympics, Super Bowl, and then Dubai Tennis Championship. It considered I will not like it as much as I like the Winter Olympic sports. Maybe I have more sports to see in Winter Olympics. So that's an example of few short learning or one short learning. The fifth trick is to use magic words. These large language models are just next word predictors. They are predicting what next word should be there. But in their training set, they are trained on something called RLHF reinforcement learning on human feedback. So because they are trained in a certain way, they are likely to give you a better answer if you use a specific word or a specific set of words. So the first magic phrase is step by step. Here I have a prompt where I'm asking to create a Google script code. But with the same prompt, if I add this phrase of step by step, I will get a whole lot better answer. In this answer, I have just a simple basic description, the code and instruction to implement. Take a deep breath and step by step solve the following request. Not only it gives me the link to Google scripts, it has a precursor to the code. The code is more documented compared to what it was able to generate previously. And after completing the code, it has more detailed instructions on how I am able to customize the code, run the script and add more functionality that was completely missing from the previous ones. So if you use these magic words, your outputs are going to be a whole lot better. One final tip I want to give you is that be focused on what you ask. So instead of asking it to give you a whole recipe and the side effects of that recipe, just focus on one thing at a time. Ask for a good cake recipe. Once you figure out that recipe is good for you, then go ahead and ask for like, what are the side effects of eating sugar? That way, GPT can actually use its token length to give you more detailed and useful answer one at a time. Apart from these six tips, there are a whole lot more things for us to explore. In the next video, I will show you how to use custom instructions to get better results and a PDF that contains all of these prompts so that you can easily copy paste and save it for yourself. So if you like high quality AI content, consider subscribing. See you in the next video.